Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Gastola, Managing Editor for Shadowproof.com. Thank you so much for all of your support last week while we were in London to cover WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition proceedings. We could not have done what we did without you. All of the support we received, all of your praise, everything that you did for us made it possible for our journalism to have the kind of impact that it had last week. And so many of you out there dipped into your pockets to give one, two, and three dollars that we feel really confident about the work that we are doing. This is the first time in Shadowproof's history that we funded an international reporting trip. And there are a lot of costs that are incurred when sending a reporter abroad to cover anything. But you know, in this case, we are talking about a case in London that's expected to unfold over the next two to three years potentially because of the appeals process. And so knowing that we have a base of support out there that will help us fund this kind of journalism is crucial if we're going to commit ourselves to covering this story at every phase. I'd like to tell you about what your money is going toward and some of the expenses that we had going into this and while we were in London so that you can understand what your money is helping us pay for and the kind of costs that we are defraying and we're able to manage because of all of you. At first we believed that, and so did some of the attorneys on the legal teams think that these proceedings would go into Monday and Tuesday, the following week. And at first we heard this is going to be one week, so we had booked flights. But then it became, oh, it's going to be longer, so I made a change to my flight. And by changing that flight, I incurred additional airline expenses because I was not able to cancel my airfare and had to book an entirely new round trip with a different airline. So that's about $1,300 in total that Shadowproof had to spend in order to cover the round trip of going to the UK and back because half of that was incidental and we just lost that money. There was no way for us to get it back. For lodging, we went through Airbnb thinking that was the best budget way in order to approach finding a place where I could stay, that I could have a home base in order to produce the reports that I would be releasing, a home base where I could talk to any reporters or correspondents or anyone from any of these media outlets throughout the world like Sky News Australia that might contact me and wanna do interviews before and after proceedings each day. And so I got this Airbnb. It was online and listed as a luxury modern apartment and it was very close to the prison. But as it turns out, what I had reserved was a private room in somebody's apartment and I would have I would be their dorm mate for this whole week. There would be very limit there would be a lot of limits to the kind of privacy that I would have while covering there. I, I don't know if it would have been possible for me to do interviews. There was no desk. There was no space for me to set up in this private room that I had next to my bed so that I could talk to Sky News Australia or BBC and, and others and have some kind of privacy, have silence and quiet so that I could do these without being disrupted. So we booked an entirely new place for lodging, uh, selected this hotel that would be a controlled environment where we knew that it would be easy and simple throughout the rest of the week, relatively stress-free, and it all went tremendously well. But in total, those costs also added up to $1,300. So there's $2,600 right there and half of that incidental expenses that next time we hope we're not going to incur, but this time around we had to absorb those costs. And often for outlets that are corporate or establishment media or people who have 
billionaire funders, they're able to absorb these costs built into their budget. They might be able to manage incidental expenses like this. But Shadowproof, at Shadowproof, we don't really have that ability. And we depend on you to help keep us from getting in a hole where we would be discouraged from covering this story further. And we've committed ourselves to this. We're going to keep covering Julian Assange's proceedings, but all of that depends on the kind of support that we receive from our readers, our members, and people who stumble upon our work as well. People who share it for the first time, people who see and appreciate what we're doing, and then think to themselves, I'd like to keep this going and chip in a few dollars. That's how we're going to keep this independent journalism constant while this two to three year process unfolds in the United Kingdom, where the United States is trying to extradite Julian Assange, a journalist, to the United States. So I uh, want to thank everyone again for all of your support. But if you can and you haven't already, please dip into your pockets. Give us one or two, three dollars. Just as a one time donation, it's all going to add up. We're already seeing it on our end that it's added up. And not only does it help us defray the costs of covering that came from this reporting trip, but it'll give us a base of funds headed into May and June when this next hearing is coming up. This three week hearing in May and June where Julian Assange's lawyers and the prosecution are going to be there presenting evidence that goes towards this extradition case. It will be crucial for us to be there once more in order to set a standard for the kind of coverage that there should be of this case. And we're going to be doing it because we have people out there like you who recognize the value of our journalism. So thank you. And we'll see you in London in May.